your opening comments? Very, very happy to do so. Uh, I take a slightly different view from Andy of this, on this issue. I was going to, just to start by saying I'm really a product of the NHS, quite literally. In my father's an NHS administrator, my mother was a, a nurse and later taught nurses. Uh, so really, I, was grown, I grew up with uh, these debates about the health service. And one of the things that sort of struck me over the years that the NHS and many people within it never really want to change. I mean, that, that is a default position, but I think it's an impossible one. And I think it's impossible for the reasons which if you stop and think about it for a minute are quite obvious to us all, that you cannot simply run an, an NHS by saying we'd like everything to stay the same and we'd like to just keep it, giving it more money and the state of the public finances doesn't matter and the other claims on the public finances, education, welfare, these other things don't really matter. And then you end up with quite a bad debate, which is very focused on spending and saving things and preserving the end in NHS or whatever Andy's you know, latest thing is to sort of get everyone quite alarmed. Realistically, he gets the job of health secretary. Some of the same problems that you've, you've heard from the rest of the panel tonight are going to come flooding to his door, and then simply holding up letters is not going to help him. And one of the things that I've noticed that... You know, it is at least being addressed, it, or beginning to be addressed, in the conversation we're having now after the dreadful mid staffs debacle. Now, Andy, where was your national service there? Where is your? What does national mean when large chunks of the service are failing people? What does national mean when your results in cancer, in abdominal surgery, when your innovation is less, less good, less convincing, and crucially for me, less, less future-proof for the money we spend as taxpayers? than it is in other countries, then you have some problems. Where I agree with Andy is we have something very valuable in the NHS, and that is the principle of universal treatment. Mm -hmm. And I think you can maintain that, but I think you can only maintain it if you are prepared to make some changes <coughs> and to look much more willingly at what other people do and to learn from that, not simply to go into this default that you can somehow suspend a lot of the realities and the pressure on health budgets, which all, all countries who take their health service seriously are experiencing. But just turn, if I could, briefly to the, the private sector. Cuba has two for-profit hospitals. We've managed one. I think this tells us something quite bad about where, where we are headed, because what we're not allowing is the best competition, the best innovation to flood willingly into the NHS. I heard an absolute caricature from Andy, 49%, allowing 49% of uh, hospital facilities or, or to be allocated to private practice meant that 49% of the time would be spent. And as Andy well knows, it's, that is absolutely ruled out within the legislation. Now, I really don't know how this will work in practice. I don't think he does either. But I do know that it is a very good thing to put a private and a public service side by side. I think one helps the other, and they can each gain from each other. And I think that Tony Blair, whose name was conjured up by Sean, though not interestingly not by Andy, uh, you know, was a very good example of sort of seeing that there was great potential here. And I would just say to them, please do not retreat from this curiosity. You will need it. Other countries have it. And when you said that we had the best outcomes, well, we can only do if you take a very rough, slightly Soviet measure of what you spend and how many people you treat. But on key outcomes in a number of countries, and I won't draw on for much longer about them, but you know, it, it is not the case that, that uh, everyone that doesn't have a national health service is treating its patients badly. So I would just say in conclusion that I think we have things in the NHS that are great. I see brilliant innovation in the NHS. I see things in the NHS, that's NHS excuse me, that stop it spreading as much as it should. I think bad hospitals should be taken over by better ones. I think we need to open up our eyes there and also allow a much wider range of providers. And I think that if we don't, we simply revolve the problem within the system, we hold up our hands in horror, and we call for whistleblowers to come forward when it all goes wrong. I don't want an NHS that is run by whistleblowers telling me that something terrible has happened. I want an NHS that is able to innovate and to develop the clinical management, which at best it does provide, but not across the piece and not enough.